Good morning, everyone. Uh, scripture reading for today from uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 12. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet, and then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. And good morning again, everyone. So as many of you would know, we've been working our way through the Sermon on the Mount, some of the teachings of Jesus recorded in Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. And today we start chapter 7. As I mentioned earlier, uh, for the next two weeks we have some uh, other speakers. So I'll be back in three weeks. Um, I mean, I'll be at church in the meantime, but three weeks we'll finish off the series on April the 11th. So it's always good just to... Um, review before we get into chapter 7. So what we've learned so far is that Jesus is talking to his disciples and um, he began with what some people call the Beatitudes, a whole series of statements about God blesses people who have certain qualities. And the first one was God blesses those people who are poor and realise their need for him. This is not about financial poverty, this is simply about humility and uh, simply acknowledging that God is God and we are not. Jesus says it's good for us to acknowledge the fact that we are human and small and imperfect, but God is eternal and all-knowing and perfect. It just keeps, us, keeps things in perspective to acknowledge that. Jesus also said that God blesses people who mourn, God blesses people who are humble, who hunger for justice, who are merciful, whose hearts are pure, and those who work for peace. And Jesus also says that God blesses people when they are persecuted for his sake. Uh, sad but true that some people in the world, uh, some of the followers of Jesus, are um, you know, mocked, uh, persecuted and insulted and treated badly. And Jesus says when that happens, we should be really happy because a great reward awaits us in heaven. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever been persecuted, I imagine it's probably not all that easy to feel yay, happy, excited about it. But what Jesus is reminding us is that it's better to be persecuted in this life and rewarded in heaven than to have all of the treasures and pleasures of this life but miss out on heaven. Because heaven is more important than earth and heaven certainly lasts a whole lot longer than life on this earth. And Jesus then says his followers should be an example to the rest of the world. We should be like the salt of the earth to improve the flavour and preserve what is good. And we should be like a lamp on a stand or a light on a hill, giving light to everyone around us. And then Jesus talks about some of the, um, the laws that God had written in the Old Testament for his people. And Jesus says, I haven't come to abolish them, but I've come to fulfill them. And he clarifies some of them. The law says, do not murder. But Jesus warns us, don't even get angry, because angry thoughts might lead to angry actions maybe even murder. 
And the law says, do not commit adultery. But Jesus says, don't even think about it because if you think about it, you're already doing it in your heart. Jesus also talks about making promises and telling the truth. We all know how much damage can be done when people say one thing but then do something else. And so Jesus reminds us to have integrity with our words. And he tells us to love our enemies. Now this is not always easy, so Jesus tells us to pray for them because this is often the only way that we can truly love them and forgive them. Jesus talks about the good works that we do, giving to charity, helping the needy. These are good things to do. And Jesus says, just do it for God. If you're just doing it to impress other people, then their approval is your reward. But Jesus says we should do it <clears throat> to serve God because God sees everything. So even the things that are done in secret, God still sees and God will reward. So Jesus is again making the point that it's better to receive our rewards in heaven than on this earth, in, in, in this life. Jesus taught his disciples about prayer. He said, when you pray, pray like this. And he outlined a really good and wholesome pattern for prayer. To acknowledge God, our Father in heaven. Acknowledge that God is in heaven and we are not. Therefore, his perspective is better than ours. He's the creator, he's the designer, he knows best. His plans are better than ours. Jesus told us to pray for the things we need. Give us our daily bread. Don't have to get greedy and ask for you know, sugar and spices with it. Just pray for what we need. And he teaches us to pray, to ask God to forgive us as we forgive others. He reminds us that we also need to forgive. In fact, Jesus specifies that if we cannot or will not forgive others, then God does not forgive us. And we know how difficult it can be to forgive people who treat us badly and sometimes prayer is the only way. And that is why we pray for those people who treat us badly, because in our own strength, in our own emotion, in our own hurt, it is very difficult, sometimes even impossible, to find the grace or the strength or the humility to forgive. And so Jesus says to pray for those people, not pray that God will smite them down, but to pray for those people, because that helps us to see them through God's eyes. That helps us to forgive them. So once again, Jesus is reminding us that our focus should be on God and what he wants and how he sees other people, not just on ourselves and what we want and how those people made us feel. And Jesus says we should pray for the strength to resist temptation. And he says that when we pray or even when we fast, we don't have to tell everyone about it. We don't have to make a fuss and let everyone know. Just like our good deeds, we can simply do it in secret, in private, because God sees, God hears, God knows even if other people do not. And then last week we heard about Jesus giving some teaching on money and possessions and worry. And Jesus says we should focus more on heaven than on earth. Don't store up our treasures on earth where it may not last, but store up treasures in heaven that last for eternity. Again, Jesus is talking about priorities. There's nothing wrong with the things of this earth, but don't make them our priority. Keep our eyes upward. So in our actions, in our thoughts, in our words, in our prayers, and in our treasures, Jesus reminds us that heaven is more important than earth and eternity is more significant than this life. So now we get to chapter 7, following on from all that. And Jesus talks more about how we treat each other and he, print, he mentions prayer again. The headings in my NLT Bible are all about wisdom. Wisdom, do not judge others. Wisdom, do not throw pearls to pigs. Wisdom, effective prayer. Wisdom, the golden rule. So I've titled the message for today is More Wisdom from Jesus. Obviously, chapter 5 and 6 were full of a lot of wisdom, and this is even more wisdom from Jesus. So four headings, four sections, and we'll just look at each one. And the first section is all about judging. Verse 1, Jesus says, do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not judge. The standard that you use will be used on you. The book of Proverbs in the Old Testament is, is a book full of wisdom, and Proverbs 18:17 tells us there are always two sides to a story. 
So therefore, we should never cast judgment or form our opinions before hearing both sides of the story. If you're ever on jury duty, you'll hear the prosecution and you'll think, oh, this guy's guilty of sin. Then when you hear the defence, maybe you might change your mind. So we have to hear both sides of the story. In recent years, I myself have learned the hard way how painful it can be when people hear one opinion of you and form their opinions or cast their judgment without asking for your side of the story. And this has caused me to reflect on times when I have been guilty of the same thing. I heard one story about a person, I allowed my opinions to be shaped based on that story without ever hearing their side of the story or even checking to see if the story was, in, was true in the first place. In one case, I was warned that a story I had heard was not actually true, but I didn't listen. And so this week, I contacted that person who had warned me and apologised to him for ignoring him and, uh, and for forming my opinions and making decisions based on false information. So we really should not judge until we know the whole story because it doesn't end well. And also people, we don't know the hearts of other people. Only God knows that. We, we judge on the outward appearance. In the 1920s, a man called Al Capone was considered one of the finest gentlemen of the world. Of course, it turned out he was the, you know, the mastermind of the whole Chicago underworld. Probably not such a fine gentleman after all. In 1938, Time magazine voted as their person of the year a man called Adolf Hitler. True story. A year later, World War II broke out and Hitler was now held responsible for millions of deaths. In 1939, one year later, Time magazine's person of the year was Joseph Stalin. If there was one man in history responsible for more deaths than Hitler, it would be Joe Stalin. So in hindsight, neither of them were appropriate choices as the person of the year. In 1971, it was Richard Nixon who was later disgraced in the Watergate scandal. So sometimes people might seem one thing, but it turns out they're not. And on the other hand, many people have gone to jail for crimes they did not commit. Some states of the USA still have a death penalty and there is strong evidence to suggest that in the last 40 years, at least 20 people have been put to death by the state for crimes that they did not commit. Now that is a tragedy. And yet we continue to judge and often we judge subconsciously. When I was a youth leader, uh, growing up in Ballarat, I was a youth leader at a church there, and one Friday night we had a hunt the leader night. So some of the leaders went down to the local shopping centre where there was Friday night shopping, um, and the youth group would have to come down and find us and get our, our signature, our autograph as proof that they had found us. So some of the leaders just went down as they were, but some of us went in disguise. So I decided to go in disguise. So I, I wore a wig, a big, thick, black hair, long down my back, wore clothes that made me look, well, frankly, like a bit of a bogan. And I even you know, made sure the clothes I was wearing had a bit of a smell to them. And in hindsight, I may have overdone it just a little bit. But I walked around the shopping centre and some of the youth group found me. Some of them were sort of staring at me and then realised, hang on, I know that face. Others just walked right past me, never even saw me. But what I found interesting that night was the way people treated me. Normally, when I walk into a shop, you just get ignored. Occasionally, you know, a shop assistant comes in, you know, offers you their assistance, but generally, you're just left to your own devices. This time, I was watched. You could just tell people weren't all that comfortable. They didn't really trust me. They were keeping a close eye on me. I even saw a girl that I knew. She was the sister of one of my mates. Um, she went to a, a different church than me. And um, I just saw her, she was, I was just going down the escalator, she was in front of me, and I decided to say hello. I reached out, tap her on the shoulder, forgetting that I was in disguise, and she turned around and the look she gave me was just in a pure disgust, like, who are you and why are you talking to me? I tried to sort of lift up the wig and show her that it was me, but then she was too embarrassed and she left anyway. But I was definitely, could tell that people perceived me differently because of how I looked. 
After youth group, we all went back to church for supper. And on the way back to church, I pulled in to the supermarket to buy some things for supper, still in disguise. And once again, I was watched. And I noticed some of the checkout girls sort of looking at me and their eyes wide and they look at each other and, you know, pull a few faces. And so I decided to have a little bit of fun. So when I went through the checkout, I uh, put my things on the counter and the girl started to scan them and I said to her, how are you this evening? Good. I said, you think I'm a bit of a freak, don't you? Well, the poor girl, she was so embarrassed, couldn't even look me in the eye. And I said, can I tell you something? Yeah. And I said, you should never judge people by how they look. And then I pulled off the wig. Well, she nearly died, the poor girl. Um, but I learned a very valuable lesson myself that night, that we should not judge until we know the whole story. And Jesus tells us, do not judge. In the original Greek language, the inference, the implication is to stop judging. Jesus implies that you already are, but you should not do that anymore. We should stop. And that's pretty much the truth. Often we judge ourselves by our intentions, don't we? I didn't mean to offend the person. I meant well, so I exonerate myself because my intentions were good. But we judge other people by the results. Their intentions might have been good, but they wounded us, so they are guilty. So Jesus tells us not to worry about other people's faults, but to be aware of our own faults. It's like Jesus is telling us to have a look in the personality mirror. Have a good hard look at yourself. Now for many of us, let's be honest, looking in the mirror is not always a pleasant experience. And looking at a reflection of our own faults and mistakes is even worse. But Jesus says, take care of your own issues before you get too critical of others. Now some people might take this one verse or any particular verse and they take it out of context and they twist it and they build a whole theology you know, around it which is actually unbalanced. And you know, do not ever judge anyone um, can actually be a, a twisted theology. So let's look at a bit of context. Later in this same chapter, Jesus tells us that we should look out for false prophets and false teachers. Jesus tells them, tells us we can identify them by their actions. Jesus is telling us to evaluate other people by their life. Are they practicing what they preach? So Jesus is not saying that we should just tolerate all kinds of behaviour, you know, don't judge. Jesus is not saying that it's, it's okay to have no moral framework whatsoever because we do not and should not ever condone rape, murder, pedophilia, hypocrisy, cruelty of any kind. So I do not think Jesus is saying do not evaluate other people. Jesus is saying, he's not saying don't intervene if you see cruelty happening. But what he is saying is do not condemn. That is not our job. Do not become overly critical of other people. Be aware of your own issues. And remember that if you judge others too harshly, the same scale will be applied to you. And none of us want that. If we've been listening to the Sermon on the Mount, we're probably all aware that we don't always measure up. So we don't want to have a harsh scale applied to us. We all have faults. So don't judge someone else just because they sin differently than we do. In verse 6, Jesus says, Do not waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. Now in Jesus' time and his culture, pigs were considered unclean animals. So referring to people as pigs was most definitely not a compliment. But actually, I don't think Jesus is referring to people as pigs. Jesus is using a vivid illustration, a graphic illustration, to make his point as he often did. Jesus told his disciples later to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And the Bible says that God wants everyone to be saved. So Jesus is clearly not saying that there are people out there who, don't, who, are, who are pigs who don't even deserve to hear the truth and hear the good news. He's not saying that at all. I think his point is summed up later in, in the, the gospel. Jesus sends his followers out to the nearby villages to go and share the good news. But Jesus says to them in Matthew chapter 10, verse 14, 
Jesus says, if any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. In other words, when you look at the whole story and context, I think Jesus says, every single person on this earth deserves the opportunity to hear about Jesus. But if people simply refuse to listen, then it's okay to move on and share your blessing with someone else. Then the third point, starting at verse 7, be persistent in prayer. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. We can and we should be persistent in our prayer. This is more wisdom. Ask and it will be given. God hears, God cares, God provides. Seek and you will find. Now sometimes we don't find what we think that we need, but we do find what God knows that we actually need, which is actually something better. So it may not be what you had in mind, but you will find what you really need. Knock and the door will be opened, which implies, doesn't it, that some of these doors are closed until we knock. Now, if there's something in this life that we cannot do or cannot find, what do we do? We ask for help. So it's okay to knock on God's door and ask for his help. And then verse 12, the last verse for today, which is known as the golden rule. Now, some people say the golden rule is the one with the most gold gets to make the rules. And that's kind of amusing, and that's pretty much how our world often lives today. But that is not a healthy rule to live by for everyone because the person with the most gold will look after themselves and other people will miss out. Other people say the golden rule is do unto others before they get a chance to do unto you. And that's also not a healthy rule for everyone to live by. So the real golden rule is this saying of Jesus, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. Now other teachers and philosophers of ancient times have been recorded as, and quoted as saying things like, if someone hurts you, then learn from that and don't pass on that hurtful behaviour to someone else. In other words, do not copy or repeat negative behaviour. And that's good, that's good advice, that's wise. But Jesus takes it a step further. According to a commentary, where Jesus is the first recorded person to actually put this, the positive twist on this. Do to others what you would like them to do to you. Jesus is telling us to be proactive, do the nice things, to love people intentionally, to start the ball rolling with positive action rather than simply preventing the negative. Of course, it is great if we can prevent and stop evil behaviour. That is good. But it's also better if we can be the ones who initiate good and wholesome and positive behaviour. So Jesus asks us to do the things that we would like. Kindness, encouragement, compassion, generosity. Love others. Listen to others. Care for others. Do the nice things. And treat other people the way you would like them to treat you. And that is good advice. That is truly wisdom from Jesus. And Jesus says that everything God taught in the Old Testament, all of those 613 or whatever it is, instructions, all of that, Jesus says, is summed up in this one simple instruction. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. That's wisdom from Jesus. That's all for today. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to say thanks again for, for Jesus, for his teaching, for his example, and as we've already remembered, his ultimate sacrifice on the cross for us. Lord, we just want to acknowledge and say thank you. Thank you for the Gospels. Thank you for the truth. And we just pray that we, in our, in our own lives, we can be examples. We can be um, that light on a hill to set the example to others. That we can treat other people the way we would like to be treated. That we can be proactive in starting positive action, a positive culture, uh, to be a reflection of you to this world. Lord, give us all the strength to do that. In Jesus' name. Amen.